Okay, guys, I have no idea what happened. Why all of a sudden Facebook just kicked me out? I don't. I don't know. Well, you're not on so, Facebook. That's I'm why. I'm not Facebook. <laughs> YouTube. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a second to jump back on here. I apologize. I, this I don't know what happened. So, um, well, I mean, I. I do actually know what happened. I got a phone call, but my phone is on Do Not Disturb. So I don't know how that phone call came through that Do Not Disturb. So anyway, let's continue. I'm going to let you guys yeah, give jump them back a on little here. Bit. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys jump back on here. Um, sorry about that, guys. I, I Like I said, I have no idea why my Do Not Disturb did not work. Um, it was crazy. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Are people on? Can people come back on? Yeah. All right, guys. Slowly. Sorry about that. I apologize. Um, but we're going to continue here. So let me do a recap really quick on what we've done. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us on this live and not the live that just got cut off. So we, we started with white uh, MDF board, and then I sprayed the actual board with two different colors, uh, gold and copper. Uh, the shiny metallic for mustoleum. I just randomly sprayed it on my board, let it dry. Then I mixed up um, some epoxy, clear epoxy from Stone Coat Countertop, the art coat. And I randomly poured just the clear. I randomly poured three uh, circles of epoxy, just clear, and then I actually took my spray can, okay, and I sprayed into the middle of each of those circles. Then I took the gold spray paint, I actually sprayed it into this cup so that I had a liquid form of that, and then I, sp I poured that into the clear circle as well, took my hand, and we rubbed it out. So that's the stage that we're at right now. <laughs> Stop it, Kenny. All right, so. <laughs> it's just, you're the now, one, not me. Now it's been sitting here for about 15 minutes. So this is what it looks like. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, Christy won the t-shirt uh, where I ask, what am I going to say now, which is going to be this could be a finish on its own but we're gonna go to the next step. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in with my white spray paint, okay? And this is also the, the I guess it's maybe the new cans that they're using. This is white gloss spray paint. It's in a complete different can. I don't know why, but that's what we're gonna use. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually just, cause I want a little bit more white, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and spray just a little bit of white on that. And then I'm gonna take my hand and I'm very lightly going to rub it in so that I have a light marbling effect. I wanted just a tiny bit more white than what I had um, previously when I did just adding it to my clear epoxy at the very beginning. So I just wanted a little bit more white marbling. And that looks really cool. Oh, I know what I was told you, it was telling you guys right when I got cut off, is when I'm getting ready to pour, I, I get me quite a few of these, the paper towels, and I saturate them with alcohol, and then I put them in a stack. So when I need to quickly um, wash my hands, or my gloves, I just, bare paint. I just grab one and I don't have to grab my spray bottle of alcohol to spray because now I've made my spray bottle dirty. I've already got it on my pro tip. Okay, so yes, it was bare, bare paint. Um, so it's, it's in the same little um, uh, aisles where the Rust-Oleum paint is and I haven't really I can't really tell much difference. I didn't like it when I first used it, but I think it was because of the finish that I was using it on. But I've been using it since, and I haven't had any issues. 
All right, so I've done this. I've, I've let it kind of do its thing with the epoxy. That's why I'm kind of waiting before I spray it, is I'm kind of letting that spray paint kind of make its own little design. Now I'm going to come over with clean, uh, clear, very high, and I'm going to very, very lightly mist. And when I, and I mean lightly, I don't want a lot of alcohol on this. Now look at that. Isn't that really a cool finish? And what's so neat about this, and, and I know it's not really going to show on the camera, but the depth and the layers that's in this because I can still actually see all through all the way through to the to the base color that I painted this board but I'm seeing layers of like right here there's so much depth right there it is gorgeous so again this guys you could stop right here this could be a finish all on its own and this can also be How done. How long has that huh? been sitting? What? The resin. Okay, so timeline on the resin. I mixed it up, and it was in the bucket, ready to go five minutes before seven. All right. Then we started the live. I've poured the epoxy, um, and it is now what twenty-two minutes after. So mm -hmm. at this point, in here, and it's about Close to seventy. Two degrees in here right now, um, so it's twenty, you know, almost thirty minutes old, right here. Now, what you don't want to do, a lot of times I tell you guys, wait on your epo epoxy to sit up a little bit. When you're doing this finish right here, and you mix up your epoxy, you want to immediately put it into your three circles like we did, and add your spray paint and spread it out while it's very fresh. Then, once it's all spread out, then you want to wait because then the, uh, the spray paint that we sprayed into the circles are now reacting with the epoxy and that is what's given us the really cool effects. If you let that epoxy sit up in your, in your um, bucket for very long or you pour it out and you let it sit for a long time before you add the spray paint and then try to manipulate it with your hand, it's gonna be so thick at that point you're really not gonna be able to spread it out as nicely and it's not gonna react as nice. So in this case, we wanna get it out of the bucket as soon as we mix it, get it out with our hand and then let it start sitting on the surface. All right, so this is gorgeous. And because it was about 15 minutes old before I sprayed more white paint and mixed it with my hand, this is going to stay like this. It's going to stay with that really pretty pattern that I just spritzed. That's why you don't want to put a lot of alcohol. If I came and just kept adding alcohol, all of this would get very blurry as it moved and it would look terrible in about an hour. So this could be a finish all on its own. But we're going to do something else. Imagine. All right. So now what we're going to do is the chambers effect. So what I'm going to do now, and then I tell you what you can do also, if I didn't want to add more white, let's say at the very beginning I was happy and I didn't add more white with my hand, that's fine. You don't have to do that. You can skip what I did with the white and come straight into what I'm doing right now. So I hope that made sense. All right, so now we're going to come back in with hammered spray paints. I happen to have a gold, white, I think it's, yeah, white, actually it says white, and copper. Oh, I have a brown too. We'll decide if we want to do the brown. I don't know if, wanna, if I want to add any browns in here. Yeah, I probably will. Um, so hammered, it's really important that it says hammered on there, okay, because that's where you get your best effects. All right, so I'm going to come over now. And it's super important that you shake these really well. I guess I don't have to do it in the mic, huh? Um, and then if you use it quite a bit is that you continually shake it. So if you're doing a big, long kitchen, uh, a lot of square feet, shake your can often. So all of that hammered, whatever they do in that can that makes a hammery look, it gets sh shake, shook up, shooken, shaken, well, shooken. 
a little shaken. <laughs> okay, now I want to be really careful right now. I love the depth that this has given me right here. And I really don't, actually, I really hate to go to the next step, honestly. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. Y'all, get a visual of what this looks like. Take a screenshot. Do what you need to to know where it's at right now. Okay, so in fact, how about I do this? How about I only do the chambers effect on this side? How about that? Or should I do it on this side? Kenny, what do you think? What side should I leave? Leave that side. Leave this side. Okay. All right, so I'm going to come in here with some gold. Now, this is one of those, I always tell my classes, don't use too much spray paint. Don't use too much spray paint. This, and then we get to this finish in class and I blow everybody's mind. Because I said, I tell them, use a lot of spray paint. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to just lay it down. I'm actually going to skip out on the, eh, yeah, I'm going to skip out on the copper. I'm going to actually put just a little tiny bit of brown in there. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> My can's not wanting to cooperate. All right, so now I'm going to get... My popsicle stick, so show them this real quick before I go. So you can see it's very opaque. All right, it's a very opaque finish. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to drag my stick. And this is the key, guys. You have to work that paint into the finish. If you don't, it's not gonna give you that really cool effect that you get. Now, I'm not going straight up and down with my stick. See, if I go straight up and down, see what a tiny little line that makes? I've got my stick at about a 45 or so, and I'm just dragging it and moving that epoxy, I mean, moving that spray paint all over. Now, this is another finish that you have to let the epoxy and the, the spray paint duke it out because if you don't who wins well whoever you're doing this finish for that's who wins because this really is a cool finish i'm going to go back over here on this side a little bit with some gold and you see i'm kind of leaving some open space here that is letting the um, the previous finish kind of show through. Uh, just a little bit of white right there. Now I'm preserving the white a little bit that we did at the very beginning. You have to work it through. Now, there is a... Do you use a light touch? No. I Okay, listen. Listen to my stick. Can you hear it? I'm actually touching the bottom of the substrate. But watch. Here's what I'm not doing. I, I do have my stick turned a little bit, okay? So I'm, I'm kind of moving that epoxy. But what I'm not doing is angling it, so see how it moves too much right there? If I angle it, I'm actually moving too much epoxy. So there is a fine line, and it does kind of matter how you hold your popsicle stick. Make sure you push that epoxy over the edge, all right, so that you get... I would say like doing uh, peanut butter on a slice of bread. Well, I know how to make a peanut butter sandwich, and that is a great analogy. You do Good. that? Yes, I can make a mean peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then you add bananas on it. Holy mackerel, that's good. Okay, so now there's a fine line. Icing a cake would be good too. Yes, you can get too much spray paint on your surface. And once that happens, it's like super saturating your epoxy. The spray paint has nowhere to go. The epoxy has, has kind of taken all that it can. So don't put so much spray paint on the top that 
you just compromise the integrity of the of the epoxy. All right, so I love how that's just sitting uh, on top, kind of making that um, design happen. Now I'm going to come in. I've got copper spray paint. I mean, copper mica in 91% isopropyl alcohol at a ratio of about eight ounces of alcohol to a quarter ounce of mica. If you buy the micas on my website, my the mica powders come in a half an ounce in a bag. So you're going to use half a bag of mica powders to eight ounces of the isopropyl. All right, so I'm going to come over very lightly. This happens to be copper. They're going to make a, they're going to make a new shirt now that says, listen to my stick. Wow. Wow. Hmm. I don't know if that's, I don't know hey, what's worse now. That, that or mutered. I don't know. Not real sure. I, I kind of like the muter one still. Yeah, well, hmm. So you're going to do the old Italian drip? No, I'm not because I don't want big drips. Sorry, y'all. I'm going to come over and very, very, very lightly. Spritz I'm it. I'm going to spritz it. Very light. Now, you could also do this with, with clear alcohol. You don't have to use an alcohol that's got the micas in it. But look what happens when you spritz it. Look at this. It And, and again, I did not put a lot of alcohol. Guys, I cannot even reiterate enough to you that if you put too much alcohol, all of this in about an hour is going to look very, very, very um, runny and blurry. So it's a tiny bit. But look at the depth that you're getting in this. Is that not gorgeous? So this is with the Allen Chamber uh, effect on top. This is what it looked like before we did that. So what y'all think? Y'all want me to do the Italian drip on this side? What y'all think? Y'all want me to do sure, the Italian drip? How about I do it with gold? Well, no, I got a bunch of gold on. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it on gold, just so y'all know what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to do the very famous, because of Erica, <laughs> Italian drip. All right. So shall I do it my way or do it Erica's way? Uh, do it your way. Do it my way? Yeah. Erica looks like it hurts her when she does it. She, she has to think about it. She has to think about it. All right, so I'm going to actually mix a little bit of clear with it because oh. my gold is really, really stout, and I don't want it to be super stout. Why did I do it in my left hand? I can't drip with my left hand. Well, there well. you go, Erica. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's how Erica feels. All right, so. You're doing it with the wrong hand. I did it with the wrong hand, and I have a really bad shoulder, so this is hurting me. Okay, so do you see? When I did the Italian drip, I'm going to show y'all over here on the plastic because I don't want to mess up my, hold on, I got to have a little swig. All right, real quick, let me show them the Italian drip again. I'm going to show it to them. Slow motion or what? Well, no, but slow I'm going to do it on the board. Slow motion. All right, so what I did, I'm going to do it with my right hand now because I can't do it with my left hand. So what I did is I put quite a bit of the alcohol and I, like I said I'm going to mix it with a little bit of clear then I'm not bouncing it to get it to bounce out of my hand I'm opening my fingers when you open your fingers that's how you control how big the drips are don't don't try to bounce it out of your hand that's not what you're trying to do just open it up and drip it out it's that simple that's simple. All right. Now, when you do the Italian drip, you will get large areas of drips with mica. Now, if you want to soften the big drips, then come back on a, with a finer mist and very lightly, again, hit, hit it with just clear, no color, and that's going to break up some of those really large areas if you don't like the bigger areas. Now, re realize all of this is still moving, so this is going to change quite a bit. Now, if you see right here, that's a big uh, drip of al alcohol. It looks. No, I like it. You like it? Yes. Oh, wow. Heck, I was fixing to drag a stick through all right, drag okay. it. All right, Well, I mean, do you like I can leave it, babe, just for no. you. Are you sure? Just for you. Get rid of it. All right. So if you don't like something like that, 
just take your stick and you can drag back over it. All right, so what do y'all think about that? Y'all like that? I think that's cool as heck. All right, so now, what do y'all think about that? A or B? A is with the Allen Chambers effect. B is before the Chambers effect. Let me know what you like. Also, I want to know what undertones you guys would like to put underneath there. A lot there. of A's. A lot of A's, yeah, this is gorgeous, y'all. Um, but let me know what undertones maybe that you would use and also what hammered color spray paint. Now, you can still bring in a flat, or not a flat color, but a different color that's not like a regular gloss paint. You can bring that in also, but your hammered paints are gonna give you the best result. Um, all right, so now what we're gonna do is I made this epoxy right at six o'clock. Yep. So it's an hour and 35 minutes old. And it is a little bit warm in my cup. But the reason I did this, because I knew that I wanted some epoxy that was gonna be a little bit thicker. So if you're doing a countertop or you're doing a finish and you know that you want some veins that are gonna be a little more um, distinct and they're not gonna move as much, mix it up prior to um, your pour. Now, no, the bigger container, the more that you put in and the more volume of epoxy that you have, the faster the chemical reaction that's going on is gonna happen. Uh, if I filled this all the way up and left it in a cup, it would probably be so hot at this point that it was either gonna melt the cup or I couldn't hold it. If I only had about an ounce in here, I could probably leave this in two or three hours and it wouldn't have that big of an issue because it's the volume that causes, or the pot life is what they call it, um, the, the volume is what causes the uh, chemical reaction to go quicker. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of, well, no I'm not, I lied, I used it all. Okay, so whoever was wondering how I did the spray paint, I'm fixing to do it right now. So, all right, so let me know, do we, you want me to mix up the gold? I'm gonna make some little, little veins across the top. You want me to do gold or you want me to do copper? So I'll give you a couple seconds. Kenny, what would you like me to do? Because I'm gonna mix that in with the white, just a little bit. I think the, the second one. The second one as in the copper? The copper. Copper? All right, guys, I'm gonna go with what he says. Yep, everybody's saying copper. Copper? We got okay. three coppers already. Okay. Four, five, right. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Copper it is. Copper All right. it is. I got my little handy dandy paper towel. Shake up your can. Y'all really think I have shaker's elbow. Oh my gosh. I do. I think Why don't I, you use that? I think. Oh yeah, y'all want to see the handy dandy thing that oh Kenny made me? Look, for those of you that haven't seen this before, let me tell you something. Look at this little thing here. Hold the side. Hold the what? Hold it? Just put it. Hey, you act like this is my first time to spin a can. Go ahead, go. I'm just saying on the side, that way it's... I can't have gloves on, it makes it sticky. Mm. All right, so. Is this the coolest thing? Half the time I forget to charge the battery, so that's yeah, the problem. That is the problem. All right, so, well shaken. All right, so now I'm gonna get my paper towel. There we go. All right, you wanna make sure that you let that kind of off gas a little bit. Now, this might not be pure, <laughs> may not be pure copper because it'll be pretty enough. I had a little bit of that gold still left in there. So this is a golden copper. It's a new color. It's shaken, not stirred. That's right. 
this is the new thing. So I'm going to just have my own color. All righty. Okay, so now we're going to take the epoxy that's starting to thicken up. I don't have no idea this is going to work. None. Zero idea this is going to work, but we're going to try it. All right, so I'm going to put a couple of drops. That's a couple of drops? It was a couple. The way that I cooked, that was oh. a couple of drops. Wow. Okay, so I'm very lightly. See, I'm not stirring. I'm barely moving it around. See that? You're barely mixing. I'm barely missing. All right, now we're going to drizzle it. I'll tell you how to make it here after we're done. And now I'm just having fun. And obviously, y'all could do veins any way you want to do veins. If you just want to do very, very, very light veins, then you would just run them across very lightly. I just wanted you guys to see. Now, I really didn't see a whole lot. I didn't see a whole lot either. Of that copper. It so looks we're gonna very. White. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look, I poured a whole bunch. <laughs> Look, see, this is how I cook. If it doesn't work first with a little bit, always add more. So we just add in more. Think, right? <laughs> so look, now we got a little bit of copper in there. Ooh, there's Ooh, a big old blob of copper. Look at that. Now, obviously, guys, I wouldn't be putting this many veins across the top if it was a finish I was trying to keep. Look at this one. Yeah, no. Yeah, that one's pretty. Kind of crazy. So I'm gonna just skim the top of the epoxy that's got the copper in it. There, ooh wee. Ooh wee, that's pretty. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit on this side, I'm gonna hit it with just, right, no, this on. side. Show them again. Okay, so there. I got plain isopropyl, and I'm gonna come over and now I'm just gonna very lightly hit those veins. Now it's not gonna do a lot, because remember these, this epoxy <laughs> has been sitting for quite a while, so it's already thick, but it's, actually, I don't think I would even hit it with alcohol. Wow, that's cool. It's really very 3D. I, look at this one. That whole thing ended up being copper. Yeah, it has a hint of white in it. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. So this is what it looks like. Now this kind of metallic paint is a very fast drying metallic. That's why, when you try to fracture it or do anything by adding a uh, the spray paint on top, I meant the alcohol on top, it doesn't really do a lot. But I'm just gonna scoop up just, just the what's on top and I'm gonna go back down around over the top. That looks kinda cool. It looks kinda cool. Where is that can of spray paint? I just had it in my hand. <laughs> Here it is. All right, so obviously, guys, we're getting kind of away from the finish. Um, I would have not run all of these veins as busy as I did if I were really trying to create a finish that I was going to install. I probably would have run just a couple of them, but I was trying to see if me adding that spray paint was going to do anything. Didn't really do much. Um, I do want to show you guys... A lot of people ask me, can you fracture with the fast drying metallics? And kinda, kinda, sorta, but not really because it dries so fast that the alcohol doesn't have time to really do anything. But I'm gonna show you guys in this corner right here really quick what happens when you, when you use the fast drying, and this is exactly what it says. See that can? I think it even yep. says fast drying on the can. So I'm going to spray it as if I were going to fog. All right, then I'm going to come back here and hit it. So see how it really doesn't fracture well at all? See how fast it dries? So but That does give it a kind of a cool look. Well, it, it gives a neat look, and I'm not telling not to use it. But be aware, first of all, you guys need to be doing tons of sample boards before you ever decide to do a pour 
that you're actually going to be using your actual project. Um, I can't even tell y'all how many emails, phone calls I get where they said, this is what I did and it looks terrible, how do I fix it? And the first thing I ask is, did you do any sample boards? And they said, well, no. So <laughs> shame on you for not doing sample boards and practicing. So that's my spill for the day. But I wanted you to understand that unlike, let's, let's do white, okay? We're totally getting off the subject here. But let me show well, you. what was the subject? Wow. I was showing them how the metallic fast drying paint doesn't fracture. Okay. Um, now I'm going to show you how the regular paint that we use, what we talk about, what it does when it fractures. So I'm going to add some white right here. Now this is what we call fracturing, okay? Granification. A lot of times if you guys watch Mike's videos, he talks about granifying something. And this is what we mean by granifying it. Uh, if you wanted to come in with bigger drops and have bigger designs, you could come in with your hand, get a little bit bigger drops, and your granification will get bigger. Now, this is something you have to let set for a little bit because it's going to continue to move. Our epoxy is all, well, about 45 minutes old. So when you do fractures, if your epoxy is a little older, it's going to take a little longer for the fractures to take place. You don't want to judge it too fast. You have to let it set and kind of let it do its thing. But see the difference how this kind of fractures and that just sits on the top of the surface and it doesn't do anything? You can even see that it's kind of dry. See, see how fast that epoxy, see it's, the paint's almost kind of dry on, on the surface. Now you could take that and you can have fun with it. You could have used a paper towel. Yep, yep, you could do that as well. You could, if you had it on. Or your, just use your glove. If you had a bunch of it on the surface and, I can't find it now. How do I keep losing that can of paint? All right. So let's say you had a bunch of it on here and you're like, oh heck, I don't like it. Take you a paper towel, smash it up like a little rose, come over here, dip it in, keep moving your, your paper towel around till you kind of have a design, then hit it with alcohol and it kind of makes a neat little look. You can do that with the white as well. Let's say I had too much on, I don't like it. I can come pull it off. And every time I do that, you have to move your paper towel so that you have a clean area. If I keep going back over it with a dirty paper towel, all I'm doing is gonna make mud. So you can pull it off. If you, got, if you have too much or you don't like the way it fractured, you can do this. Now, you can't do this a lot over and over again. Yeah, cause because you're just taking all the epoxy off. Yeah, I'm off. just taking my epoxy off. My, I'm taking too much product off the top. But you can do it a couple of times if you need to. Now, now that I've pulled it off and I have a cool little design, I can actually come back, refracture, and get some cool looks. I actually did a finish for a lady where I did a really pretty undertone, I can't remember what color it was, and I went solid black on purpose. I did it very opaquely. Then I came back with the paper towel and I pulled it off in big chunks and then when I fractured it, it looked really cool. It made a really cool looking kind of a granite. Okay. We did a lot to this, so don't judge it because we could have stopped 17 steps back and not done this. I just was trying to give you guys little hints. So, guys, do you have any questions for me? Do you, is there anything that, that maybe I can answer as far as this finish or any other finish? I know the moderators are out there, and they are amazing at answering questions. Uh, so, whatever they say, basically... I am in agreement with them because 
They are awesome. All right, so announcement time. Um, Bono, is that other one for the the beginning of the the yes, other video? It, it, will it be available? I don't know. I don't know if it will be available. That's what I'm afraid of. I don't know. Uh, last time, I can't remember if it let it because it literally like locked up my phone. I couldn't even push a button. So I don't know of when we got out of it, if it saved it or not, but I will go back and check. If you guys have any questions on how to do this and, and you want to see the very beginning or something like that, let me know. Maybe we'll redo it next week, a small part of it or something. But I apologize. I just, I, it just irritates the fire out of me that that happened. Damn it, Rhonda. Damn it. Oh, I said damn it. What am I supposed to say? Damn it. Darn it. Anyway. All right, so announcements. We are running a special on our classes uh, through the end of January. If you use uh, coupon code EPOXYCLASS15, you'll receive 15% off our classes. Guys, that's a pretty good chunk. Um, and uh, so far, our pro class that's coming in February, can y'all all hear Kenny blowing his nose in the back? <laughs> oh. He had the mic on. Um, anyway, uh, I have two spots left. That's it in the pro class in February. So I've got two spots left. Uh, we'll have another pro class in February, March, April. So uh, in March, we're having two classes. We're going to have the DIY master's class, which is a three-day class, and we're going to have a two-day 101 class. So if you're interested in those classes, go to our website, uh, rk3designs.com. Go under workshop, and there'll be uh, tabs for each one of our classes. Now, we just posted our premier class, which is called the Designer Finishes class. And, guys, we only offer this one time a year. And we didn't get to do it last year um, because of everything in the world. Actually, we haven't done it in two years because right. of COVID. So this class sells out so fast and it is the class where I teach you how to do the alligator uh, texture where we do some of the really high-end finishes and I don't have them right in front of me but we'll use all of these different texture mediums